Hello biology students! Today we're going to be talking about monohybrid crosses and how to make Punnett squares. Let's jump in. So before we get too far, let's quickly review who was the father of genetics. Dun, da, da, da. Gregor Mendel, that awesome guy, he's a monk and he's obsessed with peas, pea plants. And so Mendel did his experiment as a monk in a monastery and he had extra time and he would do his experiment with peas. He would look at many different traits, some are listed below, but he only looked at one single trait at a time, which is why we call it a monohybrid cross, because the prefix mono means one. So if he was looking at the height of a plant, he would only look at height during that experiment. If he was looking at the shape of the seed, he'd only look at the shape of the seed for an experiment. He did tons of experiments, but only one trait at a time for each experiment. And that part's really important. Our word hybrid means mixture, because he was really interested in how the different trait versions, alleles, tall versus short, when we look at height, how did they mix between different generations for a single trait? And the word cross means mating. So his experiments were all about mating. He would take two tall plants and see if they'd make tall plants. He'd take a tall and a short plant and he'd see what their offsprings would look like. So he would look at one trait at a time, he'd mix the plants up a little bit, and he'd mate them. All right, let's see what he found in his experiments. So his first experiment was with the first generation of plants. We call this the parent generation, P1, P for parent. So his parent plants, he did a cross with height of plants where he took pure tall plants with pure short plants. Last time we learned that pure meant homozygous. That meant that they are really tall for many generations and really short for many generations. So this image represents the first experiment. He mated a tall plant with a short plant. So what you don't need to write, but what I'm wondering what you think is, what do you think the offspring of this cross looked like? Did the offspring look tall or did they look short? Let's find out what happened. <laughs> Maybe it was a mixture. So the cross results or the mating results were all of the offspring were dominant or tall. We call the offspring, the off helps us remember F for F1, offspring, first generation of offspring, they all look tall. So this is the F1 generation, the offspring, the first generation of offspring. We could say they are 100% tall or they have a ratio of one tall to zero short. One tall to zero short. Wow, 100% tall. Well, Mendel was still curious, so what he ends up doing for his second experiment is a little bit of plant incest, ew, and he crosses the two sibling plants from that first experiment. He takes an F1 tall and an F1 short, and he crosses those ones. He wants to see what happens next. So our prediction time again. Do you think they're going to look all tall? for the next generation of baby plants, all short or a mixture. What we find is after doing the same experiment over and over again, he got the same exact results each time, the same exact ratios, where 75% of the offspring, the F2 generation, the second generation of offspring, were dominant or tall, and 25% or one of four would be short. Now notice we can represent this in percentages or fractions or even ratios. We call this the F2 generation because it is the second generation of offspring. Wow, and you know what? He could do this over and over again and he always got the same exact ratio. Somehow there was a very specific pattern going on. This is actually where we learn for the first time in science about dominant versus recessive genes. Because somehow there was more tall than short. So maybe tall should be considered dominant. 
Mendel studied alleles. Okay, so after his experiment, right, he really realized that almost all traits had two alleles or versions of the trait, right? Whether it was tall and short for height, or he could look at other things, let's say for seed shape, round and wrinkled. We nowadays know that for alleles, we use letters to represent them. All right, so for instance, we could represent round allele with big R and wrinkled with little r. Now we know the rules of big letters and little letters. Which of these do you think is the dominant one? The round or the wrinkled? The round, because it's uppercase. But all of his experiments were like that. He all had two versions of traits, and he ended up realizing which ones were dominant and which ones were recessive. Nowadays, we can do that predictions that Mendel found out, and we use a Punnett square to really represent the probability or that prediction-making chance of having different percentages of offspring looking different ways. And this is what a Punnett square looks like. It is two by two squares, or a box, all right? And it predicts the chance of having different traits in our offspring. Here's how we do it. I would draw this box. And then I would label it that the parents are always on the outside of the box. And the offspring are going to be the four boxes on the inside. We're going to be doing tons of Punnett squares in class. Lots of practice. We're going to practice one together right now in outside of class notes. So here are the steps to make a Punnett square. The first thing, we always decide what trait are we looking at and what letters are we going to use to represent the two different alleles or the different versions of the trait. We actually make a key and write out what each thing represents. We have to be very detailed and step by step like math class, otherwise we will later, when things get more complicated, we will make mistakes. Then we write down the parents and we write it as a cross. Here are two different examples of parental crosses. We have homozygous dominant times homozygous recessive. Here we have a different cross, heterozygous times heterozygous. We write a cross with X's, right? That means I'm mating these two things. They're the parents. I draw my square. I put the parents on the outside of the box. And then I make the inside of the box, my F1 generation. Now then, when I have it totally filled in, I could determine the ratio of different gene combinations, genotype, and the ratio of different physical combinations, phenotype. So let's do an example. Let's say black fur is dominant. So we're going to use an uppercase B. Remember our guinea pig example? And we're going to cross two heterozygous black fur guinea pigs. All right, so my next step was that after I make a key, so I really should say white fur is what letter? Little b. All right, I'm going to make my parent cross. I know heterozygous would be big B, little b, big B, little b. I'm going to add those parents to the outside of my Punnett square. It does not matter which one goes where. The blue could go on this side and the red could go up top. That part doesn't matter. But I can only put one letter above a column or around a row. Make sure I have them kind of separated like that. And then I fill in the boxes of the offspring. And here's how I do that. I bring the top letters down. And I bring the letters on the rows over. So the red ones came over. And the blue letters came down. That way I fill in each box. Now I do my ratios. So how many Big B Big B's do I have? I only have one. How many Big B Little B's do I have? One, two. How many Little B Little B's? One. So my genotype ratio is one big B big B to two big B little B's to one little B little B. My physical ratio is as follows. Why? Well, 
The following are all going to be black guinea pigs. This one, that one, and that one. Because they all have at least one uppercase B. I only have one that could possibly be white. So I could write them like this as ratios. I could have written it as percentages. We will practice a ton in class and even do some tougher word problems. Great job, guys.